Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I've got a lot to get to today, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. We are going to paint this cactus, and we're gonna do wet and do wet acrylic blending. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll even do some accents with some acrylic metallic markers, and all of the supplies I'm using today, for the most part, are from our sponsor, Arteza, and they have a fabulous giveaway for me to share with you today. We will be giving away three 28 multi-pack canvas panel sets, and this is what the winners will get. They will get seven 11 by 14 canvases, seven 9 by 12 canvases, seven 8 by 10 canvases, and seven 5 by 7 canvases. So to win, I'm going to put a link in the video description. You just need to go over to my blog and leave a comment on the post featuring that cactus project, and you will go into the prize draw, and then in a week, I will pick a winner. So the reason I wanted to show you those, other than the fact that you get a chance to win them, is that they also have them all individually. You can buy them in 14 packs individually. They also have stretch canvases and a myriad of sizes, and um, I wanted to show you the quality of the stretch canvases because we're going to be painting on the panels, so you're gonna see how awesome those are but um I want to show you this here they have canvas panels <laughs> that's crazy uh, from the teeny tiniest like these cute little three by threes with the little easels which are adorable and almost sold out so I just want to warn you um to these 36 by 48 humongous canvases and the thing that's really great about these is that well they're they're inexpensive they are finished on the edge so you can paint all the way around the edge if you don't want to frame them and have that expense they're stapled on the back and um, they also have these big ones have cross braces in the middle and then they've got 45 degree angle braces in each corner so they're not going to go out of square when you're using them which is really important when you're doing a large canvas like this you don't want to spend hours and hours on a beautiful painting only to have it kind of go on you and then not fit in a frame. That is so frustrating. So they've thought of everything and they brought the prices down really low uh, for all you artists out there. So I think that's a lot of fun. So um, obviously we're painting this on one of the canvas panels. I personally like the panels better because they're cheaper to frame and they're, they're, they take less space to store. So that's my preference. And I also like the way the paint glides on the canvas panel versus a stretch canvas, especially when I'm working with acrylics. It doesn't bother me with oils, but with acrylics, I just feel like with stretch canvases they drag a little bit um that's personal preference you know they have both for whatever you prefer which is really nice um another thing that i'm going to show you is how to use watercolor pencils with your acrylics which is a great tip so you don't end up with any pencil lines and i've also provided a printable pattern if you don't want to uh, freehand sketch with me like i'm going to with the pencils you can download this pattern for free and use that to start off your painting and then to transfer this onto your canvas you just use graphite paper which arteza also carries in a 60 sheet pack for I think around it was on sale for like 10 bucks so it's crazy cheap but i want to tell you just because there's 60 sheets in there you don't use this once and throw it away you can use this like a hundred times and throw it away so there's lots and lots of graphite on this so just you know just because it's cheap don't just throw it away keep using it and using it and using it and using it but i wanted to mention that because that's great for watercolor painters as well as acrylic and oil painters and um it's also great if you're a teacher because then you got 60 sheets, so it's it's very affordable. I've paid a lot more for a heck of a lot less in the past. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to get to before we begin. Oh, I want to share this project. Let me know if you want a video on it. These three little ornaments, I had so much fun. I painted this with like the leftover paint from today's project, and they were like so quick and easy. So if you would like a tutorial on these three, let me know in the comments below, and I would be happy to post one for you. And I also wanted to um, wanted to show you that because uh, I also painted a tiny little canvas to go with my big mama canvas, and I just thought it was fun and cute. So just let me know if you're interested in those other three um, those other three mini tutorials, and I'd be happy to post them for you. So without further ado, I'm sure you're either there entering the contest, but without further ado, let's go to the table and paint our cactus. We're going to start by sketching on our canvas, but if you don't want to sketch, I will provide a pattern on my website for you to download. I'll have a link to that in the video description. So what I'm going to, what we're going to do here is a, um, a pot with a Chris, well, it's a cactus. I'm trying to go with some Christmas colors. So we get kind of like a, uh, a little bit of a of a Christmas motif here, but I also want it to be kind of like fun and modern and succulents are so popular. Um, and I also want this to be, you know, something fun to do. Even if you weren't celebrating Christmas, it'd still be a very fun project here. 
And I'm gonna give this a little handle, kind of like it's a mug. I've seen a lot of succulents in mugs lately, and I think it's just such a cool modern, uh, modern look. And then we're gonna have one kind of cactus in the center here. We're just gonna put a circle. And I'm not going to put the flowers in yet because I just want to get this kind of blocked in. Now we're going to go ahead and grab a large brush to do our background. And we're going to use a combination of aqua and white. And I'm just going to go in first with this aqua blue. And you can use any acrylics you like for this. Um, even like the, the craft store acrylics and the bottles would work fine. And we're just going to give this... A, uh, I'm going to start at the bottom a little bit darker with the paint, the aqua paint just on its own. And I'm going to go right up to the edge and overlap my sketch a little bit. I'm not worried about losing it. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of white and mix that into the paint right on my paper, right on my palette. Now I'm using a disposable palette because um, I like the cleanup factor. I think that like if you have to spend a lot of water washing out a palette and then it gets in your drain. I just think that, that this is less of an environmental, um, this is better for the environment to use a disposable palette than it is to, you know, wash off a palette because then you're getting all that acrylic paint into your, um, into either your sewer or your septic tank. And I just don't think that's, that's great. And it can be dangerous on your pipes too. So, so that's why I use that. You can, you can of course do whatever is right for you. Now the reason I like to sketch with a water soluble pencil, and those are also by, Art by Arteza, here you can see the set, I've used them before in a project, um, is because when you're using a water based medium over it, it'll turn into paint so you won't have any lines leaching up through. But um, you can also use a, some graphite paper to transfer and I'm going to show you that in a little bit because we're going to do a little ornament um, on the same in the same vein, in the same kind of color scheme and whatnot, and it's just kind of another fun thing that you can do. Um, so that way you can use the pattern and you'll see how to use the patterns that I provide, because I often do provide patterns with my painting tutorials. All right, now I like to have a little texture in my background, especially if it's a really simple painting. So I'm kind of like just kind of patting and purposely leaving brush strokes, and that's why I'm using a filbert, which is like a flat, but the edges are rounded. Uh, at the at the end there so it, you get these kind of rounded brush strokes but I also just think it's it's kind of a nice look so I'm just kind of going back through and intentionally putting those brush strokes in if you didn't want any brush strokes you could go over this with a large blending brush or a fan brush and give it a very similar look now I think I want a little bit maybe shadow around the pot so I'm going to grab a little bit of thalo blue see how how intense that color is and I'm just going to add a little bit of this aqua in there, tone it down a little bit, and then I'm going to give a little bit of a shadow, maybe even a little bit of a, of like a table there. And you do want to work the background fairly quickly because it dries fast <laughs> if you want to be able to blend and get that, that blending in there here. I mean, you can always paint over it, but, um, but this saves time, saves paint, and I just like those kind of impressionistic um, painterly strokes. All right. So you are going to want to let this background dry before you proceed on to painting the pot. Otherwise, it's going to pick up the color that you've put in there. Okay, the background's pretty well dry, so now we're going to work on the foreground, which is our cactus in the pot, and um, I'm going to start by mixing up kind of a gray color, so I know if I take my uh, yellow ochre, and I take a little red, and then I can add a little bit of blue to that, I'm mixing my primaries here, and you can see how it wants to turn gray, I'm adding a little bit more blue because it was pretty brown looking there. It's looking a little greenish, so I'm going to add a smidgen more red. So basically, I just balance out the colors until I get what I am looking for. I think I'm going to grab a little bit of that background blue color, just so that it'll kind of feel like it's all coming from the same scene. Getting a really nice, uh, nice soft gray there. So now what I'm going to do is add some of that into my shadow areas that would be behind the cactus here on that pot. 
overlapping the cactus a little bit because that's behind the cactus. And I'm also going to go down the edge of my pot here. And I've lost some of the defining lines, so I'm just going to freehand them back in. You can add a little bit of water on your brush. I'm actually going to rinse my brush out, get the excess paint on there, because it can be difficult to control your brush if you have too much excess paint on there. And blot it off, and I'll grab a little bit more of this gray here. And something that helps me if I'm doing a vase is actually turning my painting upside down because I find like for whatever reason it's easier for me to paint the left hand sides of things so if I flip it around I can paint two left hand sides and it's just easier to make it match than it is if I was to try to you know paint the left side than the right side so there's a little tip, tip for you if you get kind of stuck when you are trying to get two edges of like a vase or a pot or a cup or something to match And it always helps to um, give your, your eyes a break, too, from whenever you're painting so that you can kind of come back and see it the way it really looks. And so now I'm just grabbing some white on that brush and just kind of blending that gray in. I know it looks like it's like a big rock right now. Don't worry, we will, uh, we will give it some more form, but I'm just kind of dealing with the base, the, uh, the big picture right now. I'm just getting the, uh, the big stuff in. And that's kind of like how, how I like to paint. I like to get the, uh, the real bold shapes in and refine as I go, rather than puttering around with too many details. We also have our little handle to put in there. Let's put that right, right there. A little cactus and a coffee mug. I like it. There we go. Okay, give it a little more shadow under that cactus. All right, now I'm going to clean my brush off, get the extra paint off, and then we're going to go in with some white on its own, and it's still going to blend in with some of those colors on the edge. And that's what you want for a natural look, but it just keeps you from getting everything too gray by just rinsing off that, um, rinsing off your brush. And we can go and redefine the lip of the, um, of the the mug in a bit. And so this is predominantly a white mug, but I find that a lot of times white can get kind of overpowering and then you can lose your shadow. So I will go in there a little darker and then bring the lights out later. And I like to see my brush strokes. If you don't like that, you can blend them more, just like in the background. And get a highlight on the, on the handle. Oh, and I see I got a water droplet there, and I don't want that, so I'm just gonna blot it. Oops, and it made a it made a mark on the back of my canvas. So what I'm gonna do is see if I can find a color that matches there pretty well, and just kind of touch it up. There we go. That's why I try to keep my everything on the palette as long as possible, so that way if that happens, I'm not uh, it's not difficult. So I'm gonna go back to that brush I was just painting the pot with because that was a good size. And I'm going to start to paint the canvas. I'm going to block it in with some phthalo green. And I know it's really dark and it's also a really transparent color. So, um, so you will see whatever I painted underneath through that. But don't worry because we are going to add some body to it by adding some yellow ochre, which is more of an opaque color. And you can even add some white on the highlight side. And that's why we didn't bother putting the flowers in because you're, for one, we're going to paint over the whole thing. And then sometimes you want to reposition things once you start to get more things painted in. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow ochre, and that's going to go here. And you can already see how, how much more opaque that is. I like these colors together. Where do we get the red in there? It's going to look fantastic. Grab a little yellow ochre. I like that painterly style. And now I still am going to add the yellow ochre to the green as we work over here towards more of the shadow side, but now I'm going to pull a little bit of phthalo blue into that. It's the same color we used as a shadow 
on the um, underneath on, on the uh, the table there okay and I'm gonna see if I can put some of those darker uh, kind of like uh, division lines between the the um, thorns we'll see if that works here it might just almost wipe the paint away than anything else so probably have to wait to do any more detail on that but that's all right now something I do want to do is define the inside of the pot a little bit and I think what I'll do is just go in with a clean brush and just kind of wipe away first of all some of the paint that's in there because there's going to be some little rocks in there I was going to do white rocks but I might need to make a, make them a little more contrasted we'll see and now I'm going to take some white and I think the painting is set up enough that I can give this a little bit of detail here I still might need to go back in with a little more highlight color, but this at least will give me um, an idea of the top of the pot. And then I can pull that highlight down over the edge here on this side where it's a little bit lighter. Because remember we had the light on that side of the canvas, we're going to have light on this side of the pot. When you paint really thickly and painterly like this, you get that um, impressionist look. It looks a little more oil painty, and it just, um, I think it's a nice look. Now, because I did that, I realized I really want some more shadow on the table. So I'm going to grab myself a little fresh phthalo blue, and I'm going to put it next to that gray. And I'm going to add a little bit of aqua to that and the gray. And that's going to give me a nice, um, a nice shadow color that I can work with on the table. In fact, actually, I could do even do a little, let's try a little red and green together. Let's see, that makes a really nice dark. Add some phthalo into that, a little more red. Add some aqua, because that's the color we had down there. That's really purple. I'm going to add a little more green. I think that's all right. And so I want that to be um, under the pot over here. And I'm just going to kind of tap it out. Just give it that a uh, little bit of shadow. Now that probably would have worked a little bit better had I done it when um, when the paint was wet. I just dampened my brush a little bit so I can smooth it out. But sometimes you don't really know how much you're going to have to adjust until you're actually painting. All right now I am going to just kind of wet it and just kind of try to spread it out a little bit. Maybe even blend it in with the other paint if I could, if it reconstitutes a little bit, because it's still a little bit wet. Like when we when our water drop fell and we were able to lift that background because it was still just a little bit wet. You just have to be careful about lifting the stuff underneath. And of course, if you're doing this with oils, you'd have ample time to uh, to blend that. And I think I'll grab just a another brush and just try to spread it out a little bit. Geez, I think I'm lifting too much off with that, actually. There we go. I'm pulling a little bit more of that aqua in blue on its own because I feel like I, I feel like I lifted too much and I need to repaint that so that's what I'm doing I'm like I said keep those colors on your palette if you can as long as they don't dry out on you um, and then you'll have them if you need to touch something up like I'm doing here 
there. So now we get a nice diffused shadow. Um, I could even take any of those colors that I've just used, and I can even bring some of those into the uh, into the pot if I wanted to. Be back here in the shadow area inside the pot. It's a nice way to um, to harmonize your colors to cross pollinate them throughout the painting. A little bit on that handle, in the shadow area. Oh, I think that looks nice. This is, I'm really going for kind of more of a modern um, painterly effect with this. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I think I, it's just kind of what I feel like painting and, and how I feel like painting today. Okay, so now I think I'm going to mix up some white and yellow ochre. I think I'm going to go to a round brush here. And we are going to work on the um, the flowers here. I'm going to start with like the kind of the little the little um, kind of seat of the flower. I like these colors I feel are just so fresh and uh, and fun. So I'm just going to start by putting in, I know my hand's probably in the way. I got my sweatshirt on because it's chilly today. I'm just going to put in just some little, hopefully my hand's not in the way, some little flicks of white. I'm just going to, uh, white and yellow ochre rather. I'm trying not to get into the cactus color because that cactus is still wet. So if you do want to wait and come back to that, you can. This will be the same color that we can do the needles with. Um, all right, and that gives us a little gap between working on the red and working on the green. And now I'm just going to go right in with the red, kind of like a crimsony rose color, and uh, with that same round brush. And I am going to do kind of long curvy strokes. So fun, just long curvy strokes. This is the main color. Um, we'll be adding some highlights and some shadows to this, but this is what most of it's going to be. This reminds me of like those, um, that Dr. Seuss book with the funky trees, the Lorax, the Lorax, yeah. That book, there was always those, those crazy trees that kind of looked like that. And let some of the background poke through. That looks nice, I think. And then I'm going to actually... I'm going to move this because my hand's going to be in the way if I have to reach over my painting to do this. You can, of course, leave yours just the way it is, but I uh, didn't want to have you not be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to put a couple little strays. For bigger strokes, just press your brush down more. Other than a few aloes and uh, some other non-flowering succulent, I haven't had much luck with cactuses. I had a Christmas cactus. It did well for quite a few years, but I think I overwatered it because it was like falling apart uh, practically. So we don't. I'm not. I'm not used to. Them. I don't think this is the right weather. <laughs> Maine is not a good place for cactuses, apparently. So now I'm going to grab a little fresh white because I'm just about out. And I'm going to just pick up some white with my dirty brush so that I end up with a lighter shade of, um, or a lighter tint rather, of the color that we've been using. And I'm just going to twirl my brush in there so it comes to a nice point. And I am going to throw in some, some lighter little comma strokes. So I am starting from the top and dragging down. You can go either way, but I just want that, that uh, white to be crisp crisper and lighter at the top, so that's why I'm doing it that way. And I have to keep reloading because I just keep picking up so much of the of the um, the red underneath because it is such a strong color and it's still wet. Okay, I might do a little more later, but for now I think that's good for the light. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of phthalo blue and add it with the red. Just do a little brush mixing here because I just need a little bit of it. This is going to be our shadow color. And I'm going to throw some in down here at the bottom, where it would be a little darker. And it will mix in with some of that red. And I'm just going to throw in a few little... And I'm, I'm starting at the bottom, pulling it up, because I want that color darker at the bottom before it mixes in with the red. That thalo blue is so strong, you can see how it overtakes that red really easily. 
you can let that dry and touch it up a little bit more if you want to. Um, I think I will go in a little bit of red on its own. Just be careful of uh, water drips. You don't want to drip water on the this uh, not fully dried paint or you will end up with uh, with it lifting. There, I like that. See, it gives it a little bit extra movement. I'm going to do the same with some white on that one because I feel like it got into it just got too dense there. There. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. I see I did drop another bit of water on my canvas, so I'm going to have to touch that up. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to finish up the details and be done on this, and then I'll show you how to transfer a pattern onto a canvas in case that in case you want to use the free pattern that I've provided for this. I let this dry, and now I can go on and add some details. So the first thing I want to do is mix up some color for the little, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the little thorns. Are they called thorns or needles? I guess they're called needles. Um, so I'm going to take some yellow ochre and I'm going to take some white and just mix them together here in a little puddle. And then what I'm going to do is actually use the other end of my brush to just kind of um, stamp some like centers, some little spots for the, um, the thorns to come out of. And they kind of go in rows. And this is a beginner tutorial, so I mean, you could spend a ton of time and really get detailed, but um, this is more, I'm kind of trying to more do like a really colorful, fun pop art type of piece. And simplifying a shape, like a cluster of thorns, is um, really simple if you start like this. And that way, you've already spaced out all of the thorns on this so you're not going to get kind of bogged down with the details. So now what I'm going to do is take this brush, it's called a liner because it has a really really thin long bristles and I'm going to take that color that I mixed up but I'm going to add some water to it because you need to have this uh, paint the thickness of about I would say whole milk. You need it to be able to flow off of your brush. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to start dragging out a few thorns from each of the little spots here. Now don't get too carried away because if you um, if you get too many little uh, thorns off of these, it's going to look kind of fussy. So you really just kind of want to give it the uh, the hint of that detail. And you can pull more uh, thorns off the edge. And they can be lighter too because often when you have a cactus, those lines, the thorns coming off the edge will kind of glow, like it'll almost have like a halo around it. And feel free to move your canvas anytime it's a little uncomfortable to paint. You don't want to, you don't want to suffer for, for your art. There, so we've got our little, our little uh, thingies on there. And you can do the same with the um, the pink highlights on the flowers if you want to, if you want to throw a few more on there. And I'm going to do some highlights here on my mug. Brighter ones this time. Now that it's dry, I can actually put them on there and they'll stay. I like to have thick kind of um, painterly ones in there too. Now for the little rocks, um, I was I think I actually want to make up some brown. I was thinking I was going to do white rocks like from the reference photo I was using, but I really think brown would look better. So I am going to make some brown. I'm going to start with yellow ochre, add a little bit of that red to it. One more yellow ochre, add a little bit of green because it's awfully red. I find when I mix, if I have a lot of yellow in it, it gives me a nice brown. So I'll do a few rocks with that color, I think. In fact, I can just kind of get that edge. There we go. And maybe I'll switch to a angled brush so I can get more of a sharper edge. Add a little bit of blue to this mix to darken it up, a little more red. You can make all kinds of neutrals from the colors you've been using already on your painting. If 
it's too purple, add some yellow in there and that will negate the purple. What you want is a nice sharp edge. And in fact, if it's more comfortable for you to turn your canvas, then go right ahead. I'm going to hold it like that so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going in with that flat angled brush there and just kind of getting that edge nice and sharp and smooth. Now I am going to grab some white. And it makes a nice gray when I just add that on my brush with whatever else I have on there. And now I can kind of make these look a little bit more like rocks. Just by kind of dabbing it down. And I kind of feel like I want a little bit more shadow on the bottom, maybe just to kind of trace the bottom of that cup anyway. I think I'll try adding a little phthalo blue and a little bit of that aqua into that dark mix that I made. It's going to make a nice dark color. I might want to go in with a smaller brush. We'll see. Yeah, I better go in with a smaller brush. Let's see. Try this one. This is a little bright, little bright brush, which is a flat brush with short bristles. It was brand new. I had to wash the sizing out of it. We'll grab a little bit of that nice dark color. And I'm just going to, just like I was on the, on the, uh, on the inside of the mug, I'm just kind of tapping it in there to get my edge. I'm just going to dry brush it out a little bit so I don't disturb the layers that probably are not completely dry underneath. You always want your darkest shadow on a surface to be touching the thing that's casting the shadow. I'm grabbing some white because I feel like I lost my good shadow on the handle. Since I haven't used that many colors and I keep going back to the same ones again, um, I it's really easy to go back in and mix like any color that I need to make. There. Now for a little bit of fun, I think I'm going to try um, to use some of these markers. Actually, you know what? We are going to use these acrylic markers in a second, but first I think I'm going to show you how to transfer your design onto a canvas with graphite paper in case you want to do that instead of drawing straight onto your canvas. Arteza has these really cute uh, mini canvases on easels, and I thought it'd be sweet to uh, paint up a bunch of these, add a ribbon to the easel, glue this to the easel and then use this as a Christmas tree ornament or as a place card holder at um, like Christmas dinner. So I traced the canvas four times on a piece of typing paper and I doodled in some little designs that I thought would be really good for ornaments. So what we're going to use is this product called graphite paper. So what this is, it's a very thin paper that has uh, graphite on one side and here's how you use it. By the way, this is a 60 sheet pack you can use one sheet like hundreds of times so you know use take one out use it till it's absolutely used up then take another one out just because it's inexpensive and you have 60 sheets does not mean you have to blow through it and this is, was only like currently it was like 10 bucks on the Arteza website plus you have the discount code for me so I mean it really is a steal I've paid so much more for a lot less of this stuff so what you're going to do is uh, put the transfer paper down on your canvas and then uh, I think it's actually easier to cut this pattern apart. And uh, if you're interested in these, um, in this design, and you'd like to see a tutorial of me painting these other ornaments, let me know in the comments below. And I totally can do that. I'm just going to cut out this pattern here. So it will be a little easier to use. And then one of the things that helps me is actually taping the pattern to my canvas and then um, and then sandwiching the graphite paper down. So if I line this up first, it'll be a little bit easier to do. Just wrap the tape around. It's a little stretch canvas, just like you're used to. Then you want to make sure you have the dark side facing your canvas or your watercolor paper or whatever you're using this on. So we're going to put that down in between. 
and then you're going to go over this you can use a pen you can use a stylus you can use a pencil um, you just want something that's going to push through in fact you could use a mechanical pencil and push the lead in so it doesn't even mark up your pattern so you'll have that to use again and then you just are going to go over your design now the nice thing about using um, the like mechanical pencil without the lead out is that say if you're going to make like 10 of these you're every time you go over it with a pen it can get confusing because you'll have all these extra lines made and um if you do this with a you know with an american uh, american mechanical pencil or like a stylus you're not going to leave any lines behind and it's just going to be easier to tell what you're doing so it's pressure that uh the transfer is this and then we get those little rocks or dirt or whatever you want in the cam but in the cactus and then don't take the pattern off yet remove your thing look and make sure you can see your design which I can see it's pretty light but I can see it so with um, a canvas panel it's easier to use this than with a stretch canvas because see how dark the lines are on where the stretcher bars are that's because you have something firm pressed against it when you're going on a stretch canvas it, it there's a little bit of give but there is plenty of line there for me to see uh, enough to paint that ornament so I just want to show you how to use that um, these are fantastic on the canvas panels like the canvas panels I'm going to be giving away if you sign up to win i'll have all the details in the video description um so it's just a, it's just a fantastic value on those and i thought you might find it useful so we got our we have our canvas back and what we're going to use now and i just have to be careful because there are still a few spots that are wet but i've got these awesome um they're just uh they're just acrylic paint pens but they're metallic so i thought this would be really fun and um especially if maybe you didn't even want to do the uh, the thorns with the brush like if you were nervous about that you could totally just do it right here with this metallic marker so i'm i am being careful not to go over anything that i see looks wet still because i don't want to mess up the nibs on my marker but go over areas that are dry the little thorns are pretty dry the little dots in the middle might still be a little bit um a little wet because when you stamp on the paint like that with the end of the brush it is a little bit thicker but this will give you a little bit of a shimmer too which will be kind of fun the nice thing about like an acrylic painting or even an oil painting something that's not a watercolor and doesn't need to be framed under glass is that um, when your viewer looks at it there's nothing in between the, the painting and them so you can see that that shimmer I, don't, I think the lights will probably catch just a little bit there's like this glisten to it it's really pretty and so I'm gonna put some coming up here that stubble and then with the, and just if you think you might have picked up some paint on this just kind of like wipe it uh, either scribble it on a scrap piece of paper or scribble it on a paper towel or something so that you can remove that um, I'm gonna grab this pink and add a few expressive pink streaks I was kind of worried that it might look a little out of place because we had such a limited palette but I think it's a really nice accent and I like that I can be really expressive with that like look at how much more expressive that flower is versus the other one just because you can um you can just be a lot more free with your lines when you're using a um a marker like this now i have switched over to using more canvas panels than stretch canvas you can get both at arteza for a crazy crazy deal but um i personally just like the feeling of painting on the boards more i feel like my paint flows a little bit better and um and i just like it but you can you know obviously use whatever you like the best i mean i go through stages too where sometimes i like you know i'll like panels and sometimes i'll like the uh the stretch canvases my little rocks some definition with the silver And this is like a mixed media now because we're having some fun trying some other stuff. Just throwing some silver in here. Could do some purple too. Why not? It's fun. And I think this is such a cheerful, fun painting. 
and you know maybe it's just because I live somewhere where cactuses don't grow very easily that I think it's really fun but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to go over to my blog and leave a comment on the post featuring this project so you could win a multi-pack of 28 canvas panels from Arteza. I want to thank them for sponsoring this video today. I have enjoyed all the products of theirs I've used over the past couple months and um, I want to thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and until next time, happy crafting!